Okay, hello everyone. Well, uh, welcome to the mechanics of material class. Okay, and in the last video, we just introduced the unit system and some prefix. Okay, and now we are gradually going to the section called force and momentum. Okay, force and momentum. Uh, because this class, this course is called mechanics of material and mechanics, uh, I think mechanics in Chinese called li shi. Okay, so this is a mechanic, mechanical course. So we will have a lot, a lot of calculation related to force and moment, or you can call it torque. Okay, so we have to review some of concept for force calculations. Okay, so uh, so okay, let's get start with the, the force vector calculation. And first of all, in physics or in physical science, um, uh, the physical quantity can be classified in two categories. Uh, one is called scalar, the other is vectors. And scalar means this physical quantity can only can only describe by number, no matter positive or negative. Have negative numbers. For example, the mass is a scalar quantity. Uh, okay, let me open my, yeah, where is my pen? Ah, here. Here. Okay, so, ah, blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. okay. Okay, for instance, for example, mass is a phys is a scalar quantity. For example, because a man let's say a fifty kilogram, okay, the mass is fifty kilogram, and this physical quantity only can describe by number. And volume, okay, just like a ten liters, okay, ten liter, okay. So this volume can only describe by number. And also the length, for example, let's say 100 meter, okay, the length is only described by number only, okay, this is called scalar quantity, okay. And the other quantity is called, that is, uh, can be, uh, the other quantity is called vectors, okay, vectors. And vector in the vector is a, a very different from scalar because uh, in vector we have to we have we have the two we have to use the magnitude and direction to describe the vectors. Okay, for example, if, uh, if actually um, uh, typically we use the arrow to represent the vector. Okay, so if well, this is a vector, for example, I, for example, I say this is um, okay force vector and it's five newton. Okay, okay. This this five newton is just the magnitude of this vector. But we some we also want to know what's the direction of this vector. So what is direction relative to with respect to x axis, or what's the angle with res, what's the angle of this vector with respect to y axis? Okay, so this we also. We we also not only want to know in vector we not only we not only not only want to know its magnitude we only want to know its directions okay and yeah in the vector you need the both magnitude and direction to fully describe the vector quantity okay uh, in, in this course if I use the uh, uh, I use a letter with the arrow arrow bar over the letter that means this is a vector quantity okay. And the magnitude of a vector, we will add a, a bar, okay, a left bar and right bar, okay, okay, to this to represent the magnitude of a vector, okay. And we will this we will talk about uh, well, how to calculate the magnitude of a vector. But I think you already know because I think every, 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 I think you know it, okay. Okay, so okay, that's the scalar quantity and vector quantity. Okay, a vector quantity we will we will face the vector quantity a lot in this course. For example, force is a vector quantity, and position is also a vector quantity, and also the final the moment moment is also a vector quantity. And moment, if you don't understand, is moment is just the torque. Okay, moment is a torque it's called li ju. Okay, li ju. Okay. Okay, moment. Okay, in this course, we call we li ju is called moment. I don't know. I don't know why it's called moment, but maybe he has some some his history issue. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So, okay, as a scalar and vector quantity. Okay, let's go to the next page. Okay, so 
And we already know how to operate a scatter, how to add a scatter together, how to subtract the scatter, how to multiply the scatter. Okay, but okay, we have we also have uh, we have the same question: how to operate a vector, how to add a vector together, subtract a vector, or multiply a vector. Okay, so that's what we are going to talk. Of my talk is a review. Okay, I think I think most of this you all know this because you have learned this before okay so you now how to add these two vectors for, for example i have a vector a and vector b how to add them together it's called tip tail tip tail tip tail tip tail tip tail oh, okay sorry tail tip tail tip okay suppose i have a vector okay it's a vector a will represent a vector and this is called tail and it's called tip okay so how to add these two vectors so so suppose I have vector A here, it's a tail, and this is a tip, and I have another vector B. We, I just I just put this vector, vector B, uh, the tail of vector B uh, connected with, with the tip of vector A. Okay, and so tail, and it's a tip. Okay, so that's why I call it tail, tip, tail, tip. Okay, and the final resulting, resulting vector is the tail, and tip okay tail tip tail tip okay connect the tail tip tail tip and the, okay the final resulting factor is a tail tip okay that's the addition that's the addition of the addition of a vector okay so okay this is called graphical method okay it's graphical method okay let's just uh, quali quali uh, qualitatively describe qualitatively describe how to add a vector together okay Okay, so and no matter how many vectors you have, just follow the tail tip tail tip rule. Okay, because in next slide we will see this. Uh, oh, not this one. Uh, sorry. The next slide. Okay, suppose we have three vector add together the same thing: tail tip tail tip tail tip, and finally the resulting vector is a tail tip. Okay, it's follow the same rule. Okay, and how to subtract these two vectors is very easy. If I have an a vector and b vector, how to how to do the a minus b by graphical method? Okay, so a minus b just is we can we can just do a little trick is equal to a plus minus b. Okay, so we just uh, okay this is a b vector and then put a minus sign in of put a minus sign a b vector. Okay, b vector is here, and, and the minus b vector minus b vector vector means it's in the reverse direction. So the b vector is here, and minus b is reverse direction, same magnitude but with reverse direction. Okay, and then we follow the same rule. Okay, okay, this is this is the tail. This is, this is the tip, and this the and the tail of minus b is here. And, and the tip of minus b is here so it's a tail tip tail tip and the final resulting vector is a tail tip okay tail tip okay this is a very easy very easy right okay that's the addition of two vectors okay so and the next one how to multiply a vector you just add the, the vector in a, along the same uh, along the same direction for example 3a vector means a plus a plus a right i think you all do, do i need to explain this 3a vector means a plus a plus a okay so this a vector tail tip tail tip tail tip and finally is tail tip okay that's the multiplication just so, so just multiply Three uh, just three times vector. The, the, the magnitude is three times and we in, in the same directions. Okay. So it's very easy, right? Okay. Okay. But this is a graph this is called graphical method. Uh, the graphical method, yeah, it's easy to understand, but sometimes but sometimes because in this class we are doing a calculation, okay? A calculation on the vector okay and don't forget the vector quantity has the magnitude and direction okay the graphical method yeah easy to understand you know how to add this to vector qualitatively but quantitatively if we want to calculate the resulting vector we want to know the resulting 
vector, the, the magnitude of resulting vector or the direction of resulting vector using the graphical method, mm, uh, not, not, not easy to cal easy to get the results. So we need, need to come up some systematic method to calculate the magnitude and direction of the resulting vector. Okay, so this will on. Uh, and so the next few slides, just just want to tell you what's 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 the systematic method, okay? Uh, because in force calculation, we will we will face two very uh, common situation. One is, okay, I give you a two force vector, and I want to find a resulting vector, okay? And using graphical method, yeah, we can find a resulting vector, of course. But what's the magnitude and direction of the resulting vector? Mm, the graphical method cannot tell you, okay? And the other situation, suppose I have I give you a resulting force factor and I want to decompose this these force factors. I want to decompose this this force vector into F me uh, F V and F U. Okay. And sometimes the U and V they are not orthogonal to each other. Orthogonal, yeah, maybe you haven't heard about the, the vocabulary orthogonal. Orthogonal very simply Sim very simple explanation is it's a 90 degree okay okay and we will we will face this situation a lot if i give you a force factor i want to decompose to fv and the force along this direction and force along the direction and this the force on this direction these two direction add add up will become this resulting force Okay, so decomposing the force to the mu v direction, mu direction. Mm, how to do that? And especially in common situation, v and u are not ninety degree. If it's ninety degree, it's very simple. Okay, we will talk about this later. If ninety degree, very simple. But what if it's not the decompo the, the decomposed force vector are not orthogonal? How to do that? Okay, so two situation. One is find a resulting force vector. The other is decompose the force vector into the two different directions. Uh, how to do that? Okay. Uh, so the systematic way is, uh, okay, so here. It's called uh, uh, follow these two, follow the two, uh, I call strategy, uh, two steps, okay. The first step is uh, uh, draw a parallel parallelogram. Um, parallelogram. Okay, draw a parallelogram. That's the first step. And the second, use the trigonometry. Trigonometry. Oh, yeah, trigonometry. Okay, trigonometry. If you don't know this vocabulary, it's called sanjiaoshi. Okay, use the trigonometry. Okay, so basically, just these two steps: find the resulting force vector or decompose the force vector using these two 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 steps. First of all, draw a parallelogram, and the other using the trigonometry. And the trigonometry, we will use two two simple laws. Okay, I think or or I think you must learn this in your junior high school. It's called one is sine law, the other is cosine law. Okay, cosine law is okay for this this triangle. The c square equal to a squared plus b square minus 2a times b and cosine c okay c is the upper side angle for the side c b is the upper side angle for side b a is the upper side angle for side, uh, side a mm, okay and this is cosine law and the other is sine law okay sine law is uh um the, the side a divided by sine a <laughs> Okay, and equal to equal to sine b divided by sine b. Okay, equal to the side c divided by sine c. Okay, and it's called sine law and cosine law. Okay, uh, I I don't want to prove this because uh, you can Google it on like those to you can Google how to how 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 these two are, are approved. I don't want to show that. Okay. And cosine law not only for side C, side A, a side A and side B also have cosine law. I just put this, this slide here. Okay, cosine law. Each side also has each side has all it has its own cosine law. Okay. 
Okay, so okay, so let's start with the example. So, hmm, how to how to use these two steps to find a resulting vector, resulting force vector, or decompose a force vector in a non-orthogonal coordinate. Okay, or a non-orthogonal direction. Okay, let's start the first one. Okay. Okay, so this is a very typical force vector calculations. I suppose I have two force vector, and this F1 is 100 Newton, F2 is 150 Newton. Uh, okay, and this two is a magnitude of force. And also it gives you a direction. Okay, and uh, F1 force vector, its direction with respect to the X axis is 15 degree, and F2 with respect to Y axis is 10 degree. And give it a, a fine in this problem simple. We want to try to okay find the resulting find the resulting force factor. Okay, so how to um solve this question? Uh, how to solve this problem? Not quite solve the problem. Okay, let's see which which color. Okay. Okay, so okay, let's draw simply by this graph. Okay, so this is F one. And this is F2, F2, okay. Okay, so, okay, and then, let me see. Is a 15 uh, degree, this is a 10 degree. Yeah, it's not really not 10 degree, but just, I'm not good at drawing, <laughs> okay. Okay, first of all, final resulting factor. Okay, for the first step, and draw a par parallelogram. Okay, if you don't know what the parallelogram is, it's called 平行四边形. Okay, a parallelogram. Okay, the parallelogram. Okay, I have these two vectors, and draw a parallelogram based on these two vectors. How to do that? Okay, 平行四边形, okay. Okay, this F1 here, so I draw, I just uh, parallel, draw a, a vector parallel, parallel with the, parallel with the F1, okay, parallel F1, and I draw it here. Be careful, so it's parallel ground. Okay, draw it here. And the other, I'd also draw a, a vector parallel to F2, parallel is means pinching, okay? Okay, so I, I change, <coughs> I change the other color. You know which color? Okay, so I draw up the other vector parallel to F2. So I think it's, it's in here. It's not that parallel. Okay. Ah, maybe they're not perfect. Okay, so I'm not really good at drawing. Okay, so uh, simply speaking, I draw a parallelogram based on these two force vector, and a green one parallel to F two, and a pink one, pink one parallel to F one. Okay, so I draw a parallelogram, and and what's the resulting vector? The resulting vector is just uh, just here. Okay, just a diagonal here, diagonal vector in this parallelogram. Okay, so this is F, I call it resulting force vector. Uh, yeah, I should use the, yeah, I think I should use this to represent the vector. Sorry about this. So, to, okay. Okay, so we finished the first step, draw a parallelogram. Okay, the second one, use the trigonometry. Okay, in trigonometry, like, like uh, in this previous slide, this, using the sine law and cosine law. Okay, let's pick up a triangle. Okay, so which triangle we are going to choose? Okay, we choose this triangle, the, the down the down triangle. Okay, so, okay, so, and let's uh, mark this. So I if I call this angle one, this is angle two, and this is angle three, okay? So let's first uh, write down the sine law. Okay, okay. Sine law. Sine law is uh sine law is the resulting vector fr divided by sine angle three. Be careful. Sine angle three equal to okay f1 is here uh, uh sorry so sorry this is f2 f2 is here f2 f2 is here. F1 is here, 
F2 is here because this green one is parallel to F2. So this F2, okay? So F2, magnitude F2 divided by sine angle one. And uh, the, the, this is uh, here. Yeah, be careful. This is F1, F1. F1 and ang sine angle two. Sine angle two. Okay, so if the magnitude F1, F2, we know this because this problem give you, okay, this is 100 Newton, this is 150 Newton. The resulting vector, we don't know. Okay, so do we know angle one and angle two uh, based on this information of right now? Do we know angle one and angle two? Hmm, not exactly. Okay, so what we, what we, what, what we know is here. Okay, what we know right now is he, this angle, uh, which color I should use? Do, 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 which color? Which color? I don't have any color right now. Okay, what we know is this one. What we know is this one because this is a ninety degree, and this ten degree here, fifteen degree here. So here we, here is sixty five degree, right? Yeah, 90 degree minus 10 degree and minus 15 degree here. So what we know the angle is uh, 65 degree here. So so because this is a parallelogram, so here it should be 65 degree, okay? So this is a parallelogram. So based on this information, I think we can, we, 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 we know the angle three, right? The angle three is equal to uh, 360 degree minus two times 65 degree divided by two. So what's the angle? Uh, some 360 degree and 130. So it's two through one. So it's a one, one, five degree. So we can solve the, we know the angle three. Angle three is one, one, five degree. Okay, okay. So we know the angle three, uh, force one and force uh, force two. The magnitude of force two and magnitude of force one. Okay, but can we use the sine law to figure out the, what the fr is? The magnitude fr or sine angle one and sine angle two? Uh, no, no. Okay. So if the sine law doesn't work, okay, let's try another one. Let's try cosine law. Okay. So let's write down the cosine law. Cosine law. Okay, cosine law. Okay, let's also just focus on this the, the, the down this down triangle. Okay, this down triangle. Okay, this down triangle. Okay, tell you if you use apply the apply apply the cosine law based on the resulting force vector, it will be okay. The force vector square equal to F1 square plus F2 square minus 2 F1 F2 and uh, here because we know the angle 3 that's why I use this cosine because 3 side you 3 side this side this side 3 side 3 side all have cosine laws but because we know the angle 3 that's why I choose this cosine law Okay, because the other two cosine law, I think they don't work. Okay, and so this this cosine angle three. Okay, because angle three we know is one hundred fifteen degree. Okay, and F one magnitude F one we know magnitude and um, magnitude F two we know. Okay, we know we know and angle three we know. Okay, so we know this. So we all know this all unknown. So what's the F R? I think you can solve it. Okay, because this F1, F2, we all know all information, and also we also know the cosine as angle 3 is 115 degree. So, just using you a calculator because I'm not going to show the detail of the calculation. Yeah, because it just, yeah, I don't think it's worth to show the calculation on this. This <laughs> problem, okay. Uh, so, so, uh, 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 so FR is, I think the answer is 200 and uh, 230, and don't uh, be careful, it's uh, units, it's uh, Newton.
Okay, so FR is 200, 230 Newton. So we solve the FR, the magnitude of FR. Okay, so in this problem, we want to determine the magnitude and direction of the resulting force. Okay, magnitude, we go, we, we, we solve it. The other is direction. Okay, and the, the problem want to show, okay, they just want to know, okay, the direction of this resulting force vector. So I mean, what is he trying to say is let's solve this angle. Ah, yes, yeah, difficult to draw it. Okay. Okay, and let me erase something. He wants you to 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 solve this angle. Okay. Or what about you want to, the problem want to you solve this what this angle is this one this one. Okay. This one. Want to you solve this angle, this angle, and this angle is this angle is because the force vector is is angle is angle question mark with respect to x axis. So the question mark, what's the angle? The question angle is equal to be careful. This is equal to angle one plus fifteen degree. Okay, so if we want to if we want to solve this question angle, okay, the unknown angle, so we need to solve the angle one. Okay, so do we have information to solve angle one? So going back to the sign law here, okay, at the, at the very beginning I said I, we cannot use the sign law because we missing something. But after using the cosine law, we solve the fr, the magnitude of fr. So here we know this two hundred and thirteen. So so we can we have this value here. So so so. And then we can apply the sine law finally. It's equal to, so F of two is 100 Newton and we have the sine angle one. So we can solve the sine angle one. I think using your engineering calculator, okay. Hmm, what's the answer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't write the answer here. What's the answer? Ah, I forgot the answer. Ah, let me check the textbook. <laughs> okay, the answer should be answer should be one. <laughs> answer is do, 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 do. the answer is sign a a a a a thirty nine point eight degree. Okay, thirty nine. It's about thirty nine point eight degree. Thirty nine point eight degree. Okay. And so what's the what's the what's the unknown angle? So it's thirty nine point eight degree plus fifteen degrees. So it's equal to um, it's fifty four point eight degree. Okay, it's about fifty five degree and very close to fifty five degree. Okay, so so okay, so did it, did I write something wrong here? Let me check. Mm -hmm. Okay, F two. Ah, sorry. <laughs> I this is F two is F two is F two is not the one hundred F two, yeah, yeah F two is one hundred fifty. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, I feel a little. That's why I feel a little strange. It doesn't look like okay. So one hundred fifty is here. It's one hundred. Okay, so this is not. So this is one hundred fifty. Mm, F2, yeah, be careful. Okay, very easy calculation, but you still will make some mistakes. So it's F2, yeah, F2. Okay, okay, F2 is 150. Yep, so this is 150, and then you can solve the angle, angle one. Okay, so that's the uh, basic process to calculate the resulting force vector and and we will show the, the, the other example is called decompose the force vector. Yeah, we we will also use the same strategy. It's called um yeah. First of all, draw a parallelogram based on the force vector, and then use a trig trigonometry. Okay, yeah. More specifically, mean sine law and cosine law to solve everything out. Okay, I believe this type of calculation. I think you, I think you probably learned in your high school. Okay, or first year of uh, of uh, first year of physics, but. 
um, it's not bad to, to, to refresh it, to, to refresh it. Okay, so, okay, so I'll just start a video here. Okay, and see you in another next video. Bye bye. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Oh.